Welcome to this Tobacco University video. We'll, we'll be looking at a population lab with yeast. You can get different sugar solutions to see how that changes the yeast population. Okay, so today's lab is going to be looking at growing yeast. Here we have uh, some yeast and we have some different sugar solutions. So we're going to take a look and see what sugar solution the yeast prefers as far as what does it grow the best in. How we're going to do that is by measuring or observing the amount of carbon dioxide that is produced. So we need to develop a way to capture that. So we're going to be using fermentation test tubes. These are large test tubes and regular small test tubes. I'm going to show you how we're going to set these up. All right, this shows the basic uh, lab, how it should look in the end with our molasses and honey solutions. We'll also be preparing our refined sugar. Here's our stock solutions of honey, refined sugar, and molasses, as well as our yeast suspension ready to go. We're going to take our large beakers, just simply going to hold everything. Be careful, this is all a glassware. And I have one of the small test tubes. Now measuring the exact amount of liquid isn't that important. What we want to make sure is we're going to fill this up. So I have molasses. Uh, regular refined sucrose or sugar, and then I have honey. Each of these are a 20% solution. So I've allocated them out into small beakers here. Again, we take so our test tube, we take our honey solution, which is 20%. We add approximately halfway full of our honey solution. We got our honey solution there. Then we're gonna take about 20 drops, which is gonna equal one milliliter of our yeast solution. Perfect. We've got our yeast solution we can clearly see is kind of separated out from the honey. So we want to just kind of mix that in to get a good even distribution. And then we're going to fill the test tube back up with that 20% honey solution. As close to the top as we can get. Take our fermentation test tube that we've got that full. Take our fermentation test tube. Add that over the top here carefully. This is all his glassware. Push that up to the very top as we can see there. And then we're just going to kind of flip this over and then we're going to measure the air bubble that's been produced there. And over time that yeast is going to grow, the CO2 gets captured and we'll be able to measure that over a period of time. I'm going to repeat that also with the other sugar solution and you can see here pretty much around the same air bubble and let's see how they look um, tomorrow. So now we've given our yeast some time to grow in their various sugar solutions, and we can see there's varying degrees of happiness going on. Uh, we have the molasses, we have the honey, and we have the refined sugar, which is the clear one. And we can see that there is a difference between the amount of carbon dioxide gas produced, the amount of bubbles. The greater the bubble height, uh, the greater the amount of yeast. So in our example here, the molasses definitely has the greatest bubble kidding that the yeast is growing the best in this sugar solution. That would then be followed by our sucrose, or refined sugar, located right here. And lastly, it looks like in this example here, the honey had the least amount of yeast growth relating directly to the least amount of carbon dioxide produced. How are we going to quantify this? Well, we're simply going to take a ruler and we're going to measure in millimeters the height of that bubble. So we're going to go through and we're going to take the area from the height of that bubble to basically the height of that test tube and measure that. And compare, us, compare that to our reading we originally took when we initially flipped everything over and got the initial bubble. Because we left usually just a little bit of a bubble there to begin with. Now we're able to see how much gas was produced directly correlating to the amount of yeast here, the population of the yeast in this sugar solution. And here we can clearly see those differences. This is again the molasses producing the most. In comparison, the honey here has the least amount. And the refined sugar is clear liquid solution, so a little hard, harder to see, but that had the second most. So again, we're looking here, we're directly correlating carbon dioxide production 
to yeast population.